product, right? Like that, what helped it be so successful was that it wasn't like work, it was great to be there. Right. Well, we started going right away to the fancy food shows in New mm-hmm. York, and, um, and we, we won awards at the food shows all the time, mm-hmm. best of aisle, best of whatever, and, um, and it got to be a couple of years after we won the Domestic Fine Food Award. Now mm-hmm. they give many, many awards, but the, the, at the time they gave one foreign award and one domestic award. And we were, we won the Domestic Fine Food Award. Mm-hmm. It's like 19... winning the Oscar in the food business, yeah. basically. Wow. Okay. And um, and um, so so that gave us a lot of publicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and but but by a year or so later, the writers who had all written about us before, mm-hmm. in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and everywhere, suddenly were saying, "What's new?" And <laughs> we thought. What's new? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we only have this We're hot and sweet mustard. mustard. <laughs> um, but we invented, basically invented the category of honey mustard. There was a there was a mustard on the market called Honey Cup, but it didn't have any honey in it. Really? And we we ended up having the the top honey mustard in the in the country. Um, every year we developed some new product. We ended up inventing a, a, a mayonnaise, a flavored mayonnaise mm-hmm. line. Um, Hellman's almost bought us at one point, um, and I'm sure you guys enjoyed being the taste test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point, um, Angostura Bitters offered us two million dollars for our company when our sales were three hundred thousand, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but we turned them down because we did have investors, and our investors believed that we should take the company to five million dollars in sales. And then sell it for multiples of sales, which right. was which was what was happening mm-hmm. during that era. Yeah. It was the eighties and early nineties. And so that was our goal, and that was you know, we were straight on track to make that happen. Mm-hmm. And um, we had just signed a well, we were in the process of signing a contract with Wegman Supermarkets to private label all 18 of our products by that time. This was in 1991. Um, And we started in 81. Mm -hmm. Um, We were just in the process of signing a contract to private label all of those products. And um, our investors pulled out on two days notice in the middle of an expansion that they had, had approved a month before. And it left us with real egg on our face, and yeah. we ended up basically selling the company to save it. Mm-hmm. And our investors inherited all of the assets of the company, which were not huge. They had been wonderful to work with for a long time. Mm-hmm. It was a venture capital group, and they had gotten in over their heads, and they dropped seven companies on the same day. Wow. We were one of them, and, um, and so we tried to save it by selling it, it's now owned, the brand is owned by the largest mustard manufacturer in the world, Okay. Morehouse Foods in California. They pack all of the private label mustard you see for every supermarket. They also pack all the little Heinz packages mm-hmm. of mustard wow. that you could see. They, they manufacture my mustard, mm-hmm. um, and they use one of our recipes to develop a new my mustard. Um, and um, it's very similar to one of our one of our top sellers and um that's just what happened so yeah. we we that and that and and scott told us eventually we we ended up borrowing money to pay off corporate debts which we had no real obligation to pay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and scott told us about six years later that he could no longer work with us unless mm-hmm. we declared personal bankruptcy mm-hmm. And we were horrified. Hmm. We had borrowed money, a lot of money, to pay off corporate debts. But yeah. then we were in debt. And um, Scott said, I can't work with you anymore unless you do this. Mm-hmm. And the judge in the Philadelphia court system, bankruptcy court, slammed his hand down on the table and said, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas. And I thought, oh my Lord, we're about to go to jail. <laughs> and he said, I want you to know that you are the people that this law was written for, and I'm going to forgive all of your debts and blah, 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 and go on from here. 
it was horrifying, but it was it was what we had to do. And thank thank goodness Scott knew what he was doing. Your dad knew <laughs> that we really needed to do that mm-hmm. in order to survive. Yeah. Um, and so we started a consulting company after that, and that worked well for a good 10, 15 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Wow. So Vicki, growing up with parents that yeah. were obviously so entrepreneurial, they started yeah. several businesses. How do you think that's kind of affected you in ways? It's been fun. It's always been a family affair, mm-hmm. and so that's always been fun. We're a very close family, and so we were all very involved. Um, all of us worked for my parents full time for mm-hmm. the most part after we finished college and whatnot. And um, it was a great experience. We got to travel. We got to learn a lot of things. Um, see a lot of the world, which is really, really fun, and learn what it's like to really throw everything you have into a business. So yeah. it, was, it was a great a great experience. Yeah. I think you guys are the epitome of get knocked down nine times, stand up ten. <laughs> yeah, just keep yeah. getting up. Well, and they all ended up basically in the hospitality or food-related businesses. Vicki... Vicky is too modest to tell you this, but she is, she is one of the top event planners in the city of Philadelphia, and she She's was the proud mother. She was the director of catering. Hey, if she can't brag. Can't. <laughs> she was the director of catering for the Philadelphia Museum of Art for eight wow. for eight years. She was then at the Kimmel Center under Wolfgang Puck, and then Jose Garces. And, um, and she has become the queen of the 2300 Arena downtown, and then pandemic, the pandemic hit. Yeah, sure that and a I think, I think now all of our events got postponed to the following year, and more than you know, so I've been, out of, I've been out of work now for, you know, since March. Yeah, and so right. it's uh, it's been a tough year, but hopefully things will come back and turn around. Yeah, the vaccine news. We're on the track. We're on the track. We're on the track. Yeah, exactly. Track. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. yeah, and a lot of that is the reason that this podcast really started is started coming out of the pan- like the pandemic and just talking about like small businesses and how we could help them. Well, it's wonderful that you're doing it. I really and and I'm sure that you, you I know the the couple I've listened to people have really interesting stories and they're mm-hmm. all varied and. <laughs> But they all have some things in common, too. Yeah, we just thought it was awesome because everyone has their own story. Everyone mm-hmm. builds their story throughout their lives, and not everyone gets a chance to share it. And the podcast is also really pointed towards sh- telling people's story. That's yeah. why you always see yeah. like, that little background that we have. Yeah, right. exactly. It's, it's just, everyone has their story to tell, and everyone can learn something from everyone's right. story. <laughs> well, and your dad has really been influential in us being able to move forward and do things and give us advice and all of those sort of things. So we've thoroughly right. enjoyed having the relationship we have with you guys yeah. 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 You know, to all these years, regardless and, of what capacity. And the interesting thing is, nobody has forgotten. I mean, we can go to a doctor. Oh, you're the mustard people. <laughs> you know, I mean, people still say that it was the best mustard in the world. Mm-hmm. Now I want to try people some. Still, <laughs> we should have brought some. <laughs> we to it. People still ask us if we we'll, if we would ever consider making it again. The problem is that now Morehouse Foods owns the brand name. Mm-hmm. Not that the brand name was a household word yet, but it was on its way. And um, and we almost got the name back. We told this story to the owner of Morehouse Foods. He didn't, his son had taken over the company and then had died very tragically. And the father had come back and had to be running the company again. Mm -hmm. And I went to see him in California and um, we discussed, we told him the whole story. He said, this is the saddest business story I have ever heard. And I said, well, uh, the reason we're here is we would just like to know what it would take to buy back Shalif from you. And he said, I wouldn't consider letting you buy it back, but I will give it to you as soon as my obligation to your former investors is over. Mm -hmm. And so that time did come in 2012, I think it was, or 2010. Mm -hmm. And we had several discussions and then letters of intent. And the night that the letter of intent uh, uh, affirming that this is what we were going to do, was following was going across the country to California by Federal Express. Another FedEx was coming to our house that arrived the next morning saying that they had received a huge order for Shalif Mustard that day before and their board had decided that they no longer wanted to let the company go and um, that the, they were reneging Jeez. on the deal. Just our luck. Guys are killing me. The, the good news is, though, the bottom line is they, they don't even manufacture it the same way we did. They don't use the same ingredients, and so it doesn't taste the same. Mm-hmm. I don't even know that they manufacture it at all anymore. Right. I don't okay. think they do. And the distribution dried up because of that. Right. 
Right. But we, you know, we have all the recipes. We don't have a non-compete. We could start it tomorrow if anybody wanted to, I suppose. And, and that's that. But right. And there's you still know, little noises among our children that maybe this would be an Some opportunity. Some whispers of the to, mustard yeah. company company. <laughs> because yeah. people would, uh, there are a lot of people who would immediately buy it yeah. if we were selling it. Yeah. So. I mean, that we is, want to consider it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least I'll buy a jar or two. <laughs> We are busy people, right? So, I mean, exactly. Well, exactly. If, we, if we ever did it, it, we, it would not be to get into the big distribution system. We were in 250 supermarket chains at the mm-hmm. time that went down. We would not do that. We would have it be an artisanal product that was sold online, you know, yeah. that, but, and, and at a retail price and, and also food service by the gallon. Gotcha, like a wholesale. And that's all we would do. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So it would be a small company that we would manage really carefully. Yeah. I think that's the lesson that we really learned. Never get too indebted to one investor, yeah. which is what we did. And unfortunately, things didn't work out because right. of it. Yeah. It's unfortunate, yeah. Well, I assume there's obviously good parts of it though as well. Um, Absolutely. What was like the most fulfilling thing about owning? That owning your own business, running your own business. What do you think? What What would you say, Vicky? Well, just all the experiences we had and the people we got to know and building something from nothing and having it be a success. I mean, yeah. that was really, really exciting and fun. And I mean, there were times when, um, you know, the gourmet industry had just taken off in the early 80s anyway. And so that was something new to the world at the time. And we just happened to be in the right spa- space at the right time. The great product. Yeah, it was a great product and people loved it and it was new to the whole world. You know, the gourmet industry was new to the world. And so we really felt like we created something great and it was yeah. a lot of fun doing it along the way. And we weren't marketing people, but we evidently had some really good instincts mm-hmm. about marketing. Yeah. People used to ask us who did our PR and the fact of the matter was we did our own. Yeah. <laughs> mom did, did it. <laughs> <laughs> but we I mean, I love to write, so that was fine. But the mom department. We had a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had a huge amount of press coverage because it was an interesting story to people. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean we spent ten days in Paris um, at one point, at the biggest food show in the world, yeah. Um, you know, I it, it was a heady experience. People, we were on a lot of tea. Uh, we were on Dr. Ruth's program, a, couple, <laughs> a, a, a program about couples in love and in business. There you go. And, wow. <laughs> And there were a lot of people that would come and do stories, even at the food shows. They'd come and, and interview us. There was one story in particular that was always really funny, but um, they, I, I don't know if it was a local news station or not, but they came and the whole family was there, my younger brother, my sisters, all of us. And they started, they asked my parents a bunch of questions, and then they said, would you mind if we asked the kids a couple questions too? And they said, sure, go ahead. And so they got a hold of my little brother, and they said, you know, who was like 10 or 12 at the time. <laughs> and they said, so let me just ask you, I mean, your parents have had the successful company, and you've seen a lot happen. What's changed in your life, you know, since they've owned this company? And he looked at them right in the eye and said, well, you know, not a day has gone by since I was about nine years old that I haven't cooked myself a great dinner. <laughs> my mother nearly died. She was just like, oh my God, he just made me look like a horrible mother. <laughs> <laughs> if kids are nothing else, they're honest. <laughs> exactly. Well, that wasn't true, but he knew, yeah. he, he, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He's got a very good sense of humor. And, um, he, you know, he... Ex- <laughs> He exposed it right there. It was, but it was funny. But we used to get a lot of press and we got a lot of experience. And not only that, many of us in our family have a great love of food. And, mm-hmm. you know, I made my whole career in the catering business, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I've been around food my whole life. My brother Nick is in catering and he's been around it forever. Right. Uh, my sister Melinda, when, when we were having troubles with the company and not really knowing where it was going before it completely tanked, she moved out to Los Angeles to help the company that was willing to help us manufacture it for a while. And she remained out there and worked for their food company for many, many wow. years. So all of us, you know, have really been around in the food business. And I don't know that any of us really would have ended up there had it not been for mom and dad being as involved as they were with the company. And mm-hmm. our oldest daughter is married to one of the most talented executive chefs in the city. And she works for a hotel management company. So they're all in sort of the hospitality. We're a food world. family. Hospitality. We're a food family. Yeah. I love that. Meals at like holidays must be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> must be unreal. They are fun. They are fun. <laughs> we had it as a Zoom holiday this year. But oh, yeah. yeah. They still delivered food. Wow. All right.
Are you guys ready?